Hey, thanks for watching. So as many of you know, we recently released, I don't know, a few months back, our Excel for CRE add-in. Now this is an Excel tool that if you're a real estate financial modeling professional, kind of supercharges, speeds up some of the typical tasks you do in Excel as you're building real estate models. And the most recent video I created about the add-in was upon the release of beta version 0.5.0. Well, we're about to release beta version 0.8.1. So I thought I'd share with you some of the, the bigger features that have been added to this tool since its most recent video. So the best way to be made aware of what changes have been added to the add-in are to come here to the change log. And you can find the change log in the documentation for this add-in. Link is both in the add-in in your uh, settings sections of your ribbon or I'll include a link here near this video. Now within the change log here, you're gonna see each of the versions of the add-in and what has been changed from the previous version. Again, last time I created a video, it was based on this beta version 0.5. We've since made dozens of updates and I'm gonna talk through, kind of call it the major updates in the tool. Now, the first one I wanna dig into is the new residual land value calculation tool. So if I go to a model, here I'm looking at my industrial development model, and I again come here to the four CRE uh, custom ribbon, you're gonna see now this button residual land value. So what I can do with this residual land value, first let me go to the underwriting tab, and I wanna identify, here's my land cost or my land value or my land price, whatever you wanna call it. This is my input for updating my land price. Here I have some metrics. Uh, and what I'm gonna start by doing, just clicking this residual land value button, and a dialog box pops up and asks, please enter the name of the return metric that you'd like to solve for. So I'm gonna solve for, I don't know, uh, levered IRR. And it says, please select the cell that contains the levered IRR. So I'm gonna find the cell, or a cell that contains a levered IRR value, hit enter. Then it says, please select the cell that contains the land price. So this would be here, this land cost or land price. I'll hit enter there. And then it says, please enter the target value for the levered IRR. And so, and given that this is a percentage, I would enter it as a decimal. I'm gonna solve for a, let's say 18%. Now let's make it 20% levered IRR. I hit enter. It's gonna run a bunch of iterations on the land cost, land price, land value, what have you. And it's gonna change that value until the levered IRR is equal to 20%. It completes, it says success based on your analysis to achieve a levered IRR of 20%, the land value would need to be 2.887 million. Would you like to keep this new land price? And now it's up to me whether I keep the land price, uh, revert to the old, I'm gonna hit yes. And now that leaves us at 2.887 million, 602, a 20% levered IRR. That's the residual land value tool. Next, as we look through uh, a few updates, a few fixes, but here I've added various new keyboard shortcuts. The first is changing the formatting to accounting formatting with no decimal places. That is control shift A. Also added control shift N, which changes the cell background to none. Control shift W changes the font color to white. Uh, we can change the formatting to month zero, quarter zero, year zero for period. And we just use a control shift, alt, either M, Q, or Y. Let me show that to you. So uh, let's say, I'm just gonna create a new worksheet. Let's say that we have a header and these are, let's say years. Okay. So I have one through 10 and I wanna change these to have a label of year at the front. So again, we go to the documentation and our keyboard shortcut is control shift alt and then either M, Q or Y, control shift alt. So we do control shift alt and I'm gonna use Y and then it just adds a year label in the front. So let's select all of them, do that again. But what if these are actually months? Again, I just simply go control shift alt but M or Q. That will do quarters, years, months. Okay. Uh, another one is changing the formatting to a uh, 
number dot number number and then an X following that. And we use that for debt service coverage ratio. We use that, use that for equity multiple. So for instance, let's say I have that and I want to, let's imagine, remove that. This is our equity multiple. And then here we'll have a debt service coverage ratio. And let's say this is at 1.5. I, I use a control shift alt X, control shift alt X to instantly create that uh, cell formatting. So that's formatting. Now we also added a custom weighted average function. It uses a sum product and sum combination, a common thing in real estate financial modeling to calculate weighted average. Uh, here's one right here. So I, what, I'm what I'm solving for here is I'm taking the average of the rent growth, but I'm using the annual rent as a weight to find a weighted average. And so, here it's using a sum product. Now, if I were to be using this workbook only for myself, because again, anytime we use these custom functions, we can't share the workbook with anyone who does not have the Excel for CRE add-in or the custom functions won't appear. But we can use this average weighted concept. So again, here we have to do a, a sum product of two ranges and then we divide it by the sum of the last range. Or we can just simply equal go equals average weighted and we choose the two ranges and it calculates it for us. So again, that only it, these custom functions and you can find the list of them here, list of functions. And here we have average weighted averages, a given range using a separate range as the weight. And it gives you here the logic. Average range is the first uh, range comma, weighted range is the second. And we can really do that for any. So let's say we wanted to take an average a weighted average of lease start. I would just go equals average underscore weighted. Then I would take my range and then let's weight this by rent as well. And it is an average of 26, okay? And then we can hit control shift alt M to do month 26. So that is our weighted average custom function. And then we also have added a few other custom functions. So we have an equity multiple, an air check, and an is not blank custom function. Next, we have the create forward rate curve. So what this is, is it's a quick way to bring in um, forward rates. And I personally like to use Chatham Financial to grab uh, forward rate curves. And so rather than having to manually do that, this somewhat automates it. Now, um, security features within Excel make it virtually impossible to, in, in the most efficient manner, go out, grab those rates, pull them in and drop them in a cell that you want. But it still has some, some functionality here. So I do forward rate curve, this tool pops up and it says this tool helps to quickly import forward yield curves from Chatham Financial. And Chatham Financial, if you're not aware, owned by Thomson Reuters, makes forward rate curves available to the public for internal purposes only. So I'm gonna only use this for my own internal purposes, say within my firm or what have you. That data is updated regularly, can be downloaded from their website as an Excel file. This tool imports that data and saves it to a new worksheet called rates to perform the import. So here's the instructions. And step one is to click the go to download button below. So I click this. This is going to open now the US forward uh, curves. And then it has here on that page, find a button entitled download. Click that to get the latest forward curves in an Excel format. So I'm just going to click this download. I'm going to save this to a place on my computer. So with that saved to my computer, I come back here and it says, save the file to your computer. Step four, click the continue import. So I click the continue import and now it pulls up a, a place where I'm gonna click, click the continue to import and I'm gonna find the file. And I had saved that file, I think under downloads here. From there, it pulls those forward curves in, drops it into a custom worksheet, in this case called Chatham. And now we have all this data we can do a variety of things with. So for instance, let's grab the one month term SOFR forward yield curve, copy that here. I'm just gonna paste it right here as values, let's do a transpose. And then my construction, let's say it's 400 basis points over.
And now I have a forward rate curve using that Chatham data. So next you're going to find that we made quite a few modifications to the ribbon. So if you come back to the ribbon, what you're going to find, come to the four CRE ribbon. Uh, first off, we have the create date header, which was in the previous version. The forward rate curve feature now, the residual land value feature. We have, of course, the updated list of custom functions, the updated list of custom keyboard shortcuts, uh, the geocoding lat long features that were included in the original. But then we now have this add in settings uh, drop, drop down menu that includes both the option to uninstall the add in, view the code, uh, the add in code, or at least it gives you instructions for viewing the code, which these instructions tell you to um, activate the developer ribbon, come to Visual Basic, and here in Vis Visual Basic, you'll find all of the code for the plugin, all available to edit. Uh, we also have here the button to view the add-in documentation, view add-in instructions, and then a, a link to uh, get modeling training from ACRE. And then finally, the version notes. So if you want to understand what version of the model you're using, you click this version notes and that tells you. So you click that. Uh, if I'm using a more recent version than you are, you'll, you'll know. So that's what's new in uh, beta version 0.8.1. Check it out. Let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, happy modeling.